So this is a video summarising Latin's social impact theory. So Latin came up with this in 1981 and it's one of the alternatives that we've got to explain obedience, um, opposite of agency theory. So through your daily experiences, um, a lot of different kind of factors or experience influence your behaviour or how you act in a situation um, involved with other people. How much of an impact these other people has on you um, will depend on a lot of kind of factors as well. So Latin in particular wanted to explain um, social influence um, as an effect of these social forces. He wanted to look at different social forces and use them to explain why people behaved in a certain way. Particularly we're going to be looking at obedience. It is related to other things as well like bystander apathy. So um, people walking past um, those who are kind of like injured in the street. But particularly, obviously, we're looking at it in the terms of obedience. So how much influence a certain situation has on you um, or a certain group of other people has on you depends on three different factors. Strength, immediacy and number. So the strength is how important that influence happens to be. So the status of that group, if you want to be part of them, if you want to join with them, how much authority particularly they have. Um, are they a similar age to you and thus you might be suffering peer pressure, things like that. The immediacy is how close they are and that can either be via proximity physically, um, psychosocial distance, things like that. So for example, um, your friend um, asking you to do something that you don't want to do via text message has less of an immediate effect than people asking you over the phone like kind of in a phone call because you have to answer instantly on the phone. Them being directly in front of you in person has even more of an immediacy. So it's kind of not just how physically close you are, it's kind of how quickly you have to respond. Um, is there a kind of a buffer between you that can protect you from feeling kind of under pressure? Things like that. And then finally, the number of them. So let's have a look at this in kind of a case. Let's say again, your friend is asking you to do something that you want to do, um, you don't want to do, sorry. Um, how close a friend they are might play a factor, which is to do with strength. If they are your very best friend, it might have more of an impact because you really don't want to let them down. If it's just somebody else from the college um, who you'd know, then you might feel fine kind of fobbing them off and not doing what they want. Immediacy, again, is that whole text message thing versus in person. And number, is this one friend asking you or is it like eight of your friends? The more people there are, the more kind of under pressure you will be. Um, there is a kind of caveat to that, and we'll come on to that in two seconds. So this is kind of exactly the same thing, maybe explained in a bit more detail. So the more people who are present, the more of an effect it has on you. However, and this is that caveat, there is a thing called the psychosocial law. Um, social influence increases with growing number. So if two friends are asking you to do something that has much more of an impact than one friend. But it does so at a decreasing rate. The increase from five to six friends will have less of an impact on you than the increase of one to two. Um, an analogy we're going to use is, it might think of a kind of like a light bulb. If you've got one light bulb in a room, um, that's going to kind of do a lot of kind of light. If you've got two, the increase from one light bulb to two, especially on the size of the room, might be dramatic. Suddenly it's a lot brighter. By the time, however, you're getting to kind of four light bulbs, a fifth light bulb isn't going to make the room that much brighter. The people around you have a similar sort of effect. They um, have a decreasing impact on you the greater the numbers get. Um, Milgram, Bickman and Berkowitz showed this. So in another of their famous studies, they had people looking about the sixth floor of a building um, just standing in the middle of the street staring up at the sixth floor of a building and they counted what percentage of bypass, um, bystanders or those walking past um, looked up also. Um, there was an increase kind of as we went on so when there was one confederate 42% looked up by the time we got to 15 however those, it had only up, went up to 86%. Each kind of new person had less of an impact on you. Um, strength, again, same thing as I've just said. Two studies I quickly show this. Perrin and Spencer, 1980. Um, and Mullen in 1990. Um, jaywalking reduced when high-status non-jaywalkers were nearby. So somebody that you really wanted to be like, so in this case they've used probation officers versus those who were trying to um, get probation. 
um, they want it to look good in front of the probation officers. In Mullen, it's the same thing. Somebody that you look up to or want to be like um, is seen crossing the street and in a certain way, and it changes your behaviour. Their strength impacts on you. Um, immediacy, Crutchfield is an example. Um, in kind of an extension link, I'll try and put a um, link below in the blurb, um, or you'll have one in your extension books from class. Um, the Crutchfield experiment looks at this exactly. So we are influenced by other people, but when Crutchfield put people, um, kind of separate them out so you couldn't see anyone else, you separate them into booths, suddenly that um, immediacy is reduced and we saw kind of the conformity reduce as well. If you can't see what everyone else is doing and people can't see what you're doing, then you're less likely to kind of follow what they're up to. Um, Social impact theory by Latane puts this into a mathematical formula. This is something that they, we can argue whether it's strengths and weaknesses, things like that. Um, here's a quote from him. But basically we can figure out how strong the impact is uh, because it's a function of the strength times the immediacy times the number. Through looking at this kind of formula, we will get a numerical number for what sort of impact people have on you. Um, and that's the multiplicational effect. Um, the greater the strength, the greater the immediacy, the greater the number, the more of effect it will have on you. Um, it also works the other way around, however, with a divisional effect. Um, the ability of a speaker to persuade audience members is divided by the number of audience members there are. If your teacher's having a one-to-one -one conversation with you, they will be much more influential on you and be able to get much more of kind of an impact, much more of an effect on you than if you were um, in a classroom full of people. That's a divisional effect. 30 people, one person has less effect on them than one-on-one. -on -one. And this is what we get by with bystander effect. Um, again, there'll be a link with a little explanation of that um, below and you'll be able to get it in the extension booklets. A um, couple of studies that support this, and I think this is the last slide, no it's not, there's one or two more. Um, these are just other studies that support the idea that social impact theory is influential. Um, how this relates to obedience, particularly Milgram's experiment, is in one of the variations um, there were two confederate peers in the room with the teacher. In this condition, they refuse to continue. Um, because of that, the obedience dropped from 65% to 10%. Um, so this shows that when other individuals, kind of, other individuals have an impact on your behavior, as opposed to when you are on your own. A um, couple of comparison points. Agency theory is specifically about obedience, whereas social impact theory is not, but it can be applied to obedience. Um, this agency theory claims that obedience is an evolutionary trait, that it happens because um, we've evolved to be in those sort of situations. Um, and it only describes obedience rather than explains why it occurs. Um, social impact theory um, explains obedience um, because of somebody being in a higher or lower group, or sorry, you can explain it to a higher or lower group. And it doesn't relate to individual factors um, similarly to the way that up agency theory doesn't. Right, thanks.